Tony Dungy, the Hall of Famer, joining us live on the DNM Leasing Hotline once again. Back on Sean and RJ. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, what do you say, guys? I am excited and fired up. I was actually in Pittsburgh yesterday to interview Coach Tomlin for our, our show Sunday night. And I tell you, the city is on fire waiting for those Cowboys to come in and renew this rivalry. Coach, how much do you get? Like, what secrets do you really get behind the scenes that you don't disclose on air, like in those pre-production, especially with the connections you have, former Steeler and Coach Tomlin? How much do you really get that you don't reveal? Yeah, sometimes, uh, depending on who it is, in a situation like this where I have a lot of ties in Pittsburgh, you'll get some things and some information. Coach let me watch practice, and I saw some things that uh, I said, wow, this, this can help. And uh, as I go on uh, the broadcast and talk about it post game, I'll have a different insight. But, yeah, you have to – keep some of those things inside for sure because we were trying to wonder this with tom brady like if he gets involved with raiders ownership he won't be allowed in those well that do you think that would hurt you a lot as a broadcaster if you didn't have that access you know it would if you're calling the game you get to see some things and you get to anticipate some things well i saw this formation in practice and this is what they're going to do you're ready for it it doesn't catch you by surprise if you don't get that access yeah, it would be a little tougher. Uh, and to go in and, and have the coach be honest with you. You know, I could ask Mike, hey, what do you think? And how did he plan to try to stop C.D. Lamb? And he's going to tell me because he, he trusts me. And if I'm calling the game, I can look out for that. But if I don't have that ability to do that, I don't have that access to, uh, to watch practice, then you're kind of calling the game blindly. Is this something that you didn't enjoy as a coach on the other side? Well, you have to try to be careful. You want to help those guys do their job, but you don't want to give away things, and you don't want to uh, you know, put yourself out there and put your team at, at, at a disadvantage. So you, you have to be careful. You have to know who it is. And you get, you know, especially in the Cowboys situation, the Steelers, you're playing big games. You, you've got these national broadcasters. You get to know over the years who you can trust and, and how it's going to work. Tony Dungy here on 105 through the fan coach. We feel like this is like season on the brink time for the Cowboys with this. Amen. <laughs> why, why do you agree? I, I just see the Cowboys playing a little bit up and down. I think it's a team with great potential, but I, I don't see that consistency that you need. And so at some point, and I always felt this as a coach mid October, that's when I start to know what kind of team I have. Yeah. We can have some up and down performances in September, but we've got to start to hit this groove to define who we really are. And I think the Cowboys need to define who they are. Coach, you know, you were obviously one of the uh, big forward thinking uh, defensive minds when you're out there coaching. When you look at the Cowboys run defense, we're all trying to figure out what is this? Is this personnel? Is it scheme? Is there effort? What, what's the issue? When you look at Dallas's run defense and some of the struggles they've had, what stands out to you? I think it's a little bit of everything. Uh, this day and age is different this game uh, as a defensive coordinator you're coming in to stop the pass there's no doubt about it that's how you win games and there's very few teams that are going to do what baltimore did and just say hey we're going to pound it and run it uh you got to be able to come up with schemes and systems in those type of games that work and you're not going to need them all year you might need them five games out of 17 but when you need it uh you you've got to have it in your in your bag, and I, I think the Dallas just wasn't quite ready for that. Um, and they they've got to get that going now. They against the Giants, they shut them down. That wasn't a great running attack, and it wasn't a, a team that you fear. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers is going to be different. They're going to come in, and there's no doubt in my mind they're going to try to test them running the football. So Dallas is going to have to be ready. You know, coach, we've asked the question uh, about Mike Zimmer and 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 if like what he's trying to do is is either is like a little outdated. Do you think that's part of the case? No, I, I don't. Uh, you know, people can look at it that way, but it's it's not the case at all. We actually went through this our Super Bowl year uh, in Indianapolis in 2006. We had a dynamic offense with Peyton Manning. We're putting up a lot of points. So we built our defense to stop the pass and to protect leads in the fourth quarter. Uh, in the first part of the year, we were ahead most of the time. We're winning games. It's not a problem. We started out 9-0. and But in the second half of the year, the weather got a little colder. Our offense wasn't as efficient. 
we're in tight games, people are running the ball, and we lost four out of, uh, I think, seven games coming down the stretch, and our run defense was not very good. We had some injuries, just like the Cowboys are facing. We lost Bob Sanders for a time, and we weren't the same, and people were running the ball on us. But we got to the playoffs, and we knew what we had to do, and we, we – had we didn't change the scheme at all. So I don't think with Coach Zimmer it's the scheme. Sometimes it's just uh, emphasis. Um, they are going to have to emphasize run defense this week, in my my opinion, because if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers with what I have and I've got a young quarterback, I want to run the ball and see if Dallas can stop it. Coach, we talk about Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, that connection that they have there. And and if yeah. you were on the Pittsburgh side, and, and given that you say this is a league where you're trying to stop the pass now, how would you be looking at trying to diffuse that connection, which has been so successful for the Cowboys the last couple of years? You have to disrupt timing. You have to shift the coverage to C.D. and know, know where he is. And there's no question. Uh, you, you get these offenses like this, Malik Neighbors. You, you got to know where he is and know that the ball is going to him in big situations and try to force them to go to the second option. Uh, Pittsburgh is not a heavy man-to-man team. So uh, in your zone concepts, every zone player has to know where CD is and focus on him when he comes in your area. And that's how you try to do it. Make them go to the second option. And it's not easy. And you know that he's going to catch some balls. I mean, he, he's a dynamic guy. You're not going to go out there and shut him out. But you want to take away the big play and in the big situations, try to make him go somewhere else. How would you defend Fields, Tony? And are you buying that he's a, a much different guy than he was in Chicago? He's different. I think he's getting different coaching from Arthur Smith. They've got a better team. Uh, he doesn't have to do everything. He, he's not taking chances, trying to make the big play all the time. But he's still a guy that the mobility is the number one thing. So as you're rushing the pass, you've got to design your rush lanes. Everybody's got to be disciplined. You can't just tee off on him like you would a pocket quarterback. And, uh, I, again, I think if you're the Cowboys, you want to make him throw the ball. We've got to stack the line of scrimmage, take away the run, try to get him in second and longs and third and longs. Make him throw, keep him in the pocket, and see if he can beat us from the pocket. Tony Dungy here on the official home of the Cowboys, 105.3 The Fan. We, we have a lot of fun with Micah versus TJ. Obviously, Micah's not playing. Where do you put Watt on your list of pass rushers with Miles Garrett or Bosa or Crosby along with Micah? Is TJ one for you, Coach? I, you know, I don't know who's one. Uh, Mike Tomlin would tell me TJ's number one. And I, I've watched a lot of film with Mike yesterday, seeing him get chipped, double teamed. Uh, same thing with Micah Parsons. They move Micah around a lot more. Uh, they move Miles Garrett around a lot more. TJ Watt lines up on the left side of the defense. You know uh, where he's going to be. You want to stack your line that way, turn your center that way. You want to chip with a tight end. You know where he is. And he's had to defeat all that from one position. That's why I kind of like T.J. Watt if I, if I was ranking them. Uh, but Miles Garrett and Micah Parsons, uh, Max Crosby, it's a tough top five. You, you put those guys up there and you, you could uh, shake them out of a bag and, and what, however they come out, you'd be happy with any of the five of them. Tony Dungy joining us here at 105 through the fan. Uh, so, so Coach McCarthy is in his, the final year of his contract. And, and so, Zimmer. And Zimmer, yeah. Uh, so the, the 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 term the lame duck term. I thought in the off season, the team should have given just a even a one year extension just to avoid players maybe checking out or or being making it easier on them to check out. Is the reality there that it does play a role? The coach's contract does play a role. It depends on where you are. Uh, as I said, I was in Pittsburgh yesterday. If Mike Tomlin was in the last year of his contract, we wouldn't even be talking about it because they haven't fired a coach in 54 years. So <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Okay, Dallas Cowboys is a different situation. Some other teams is a different situation. I love being in the last year of my contract, frankly. It didn't happen very often, but I always <laughs> thought I was going to prove that I would be more valuable to you. You're taking the chance. You let me get to the last year of my contract and we go to the Super Bowl, then I'm going to hold up the bank. You know, yeah. so I, I, it didn't bother me, and I, I don't think players worry about that that much. The outside noise comes in, yeah. and when you're in Dallas, that noise is louder than it is probably any place else in the country. So if you're Jerry Jones, you have to think about that, 
it's not a big deal for, for him, <laughs> and it's not a big deal for Coach McCarthy, but the noise is going to accelerate, and sometimes you have to do something to take care of that noise. If you're in Pittsburgh, you, you just say, hey, we'll, we'll get it done. Don't worry about it. Coach Tomlin's going to be here, and we'll get it figured out, and nobody's going to care because in 54 years it hasn't mattered. Do you think, Tony, that you could have won big and thrived here in this atmosphere? And how many of your other coaches, friends in, in the circle are just like, I, I would never go work there, or I would love to go work there under the spotlight? You know what? I, I think if you do it right and, you know, you can thrive anywhere. And there are some people that have thrived under Jerry in Dallas and, and would would have enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed it, I think. I've been around him in uh, owners' meetings and the league meetings and stuff and, and competing against them, and, and it would be fun. People told me not to go to Tampa when when, when uh, I got the job here in 1996. Oh, it's a graveyard for coaches, and you can't look at it that way. It's an opportunity if you you know can respect and work with the people that are there. That, that's all that counts, and um, I would have enjoyed working there, I think. Coach Dungey, when you look at uh, you know the fact that the Cowboys are without Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons in this game, and then Deron Bland still is not back in the secondary, there's a question about Kalen Carson being available in the secondary for them this week. Which do you think would be easier to try and scheme up coverage while you're down a couple guys, or scheming up you know pressure while you're down a few guys? It's hard to create pressure. You need those great pass rushers. I, I think that's a big factor. Uh, they've done a, a pretty good job without Bland, and it, it, it's difficult when you lose a great cover guy like that. But I can tell you this, when you lose great rushers, it really is hard. Now, in Dallas's favor, Pittsburgh has some injuries on their offensive line, and so it's not going to be quite as, as critical, I don't think. And the fact that if you can come up with a run-stopping plan, uh, I think you then put Pittsburgh behind the eight ball. If you were playing a, a different – if you're playing Patrick Mahomes and you don't have your pass rushers, that, that's a real problem. But this week, I think if uh, Coach Zimmer can scheme up a way to stop the run, I think they're going to be okay. Coach, you know, you and uh, Monty Kiffin kind of famously became tied to the whole Tampa 2 scheme. Um, <laughs> well, you know, there's been the recent push, most notably from Mel Kuyper, where he says, need to eliminate two high safeties. That's got to go away. It's just killing the offensive game. What are your thoughts on the idea of eliminating two high safeties? I, I saw that, and I had to laugh and chuckle as Mel Kuyper thinks it just came into existence last year. <laughs> uh, two high safeties came to the NFL in 1972. Bud Carson brought it to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. That's where I got it from. I was a rookie in 1977 and learned how to play cover two from the, the great steel curtain people. So it's been here 50 years. Uh, John Stallworth, Lynn Swan, those guys practice against cover two and eight cover two up against us in practice. Uh, we played cover two, and that's what really kind of brought the tight end into the league. Um, Al Davis went out and got some big-time tight ends to try to get down the middle against cover two. Cleveland played us twice a year. They drafted Ozzie Newsom, who went to the Hall of Fame attacking cover two. So it, this, this is not a new problem or a new situation. You just have to learn how to attack it. Don Coriel and, and Joe Gibbs, I can tell you this, they almost ran me out of the league <laughs> putting up 50 points against cover two. So don't tell me it can't be attacked. Why do you think scoring is down? Scoring is down because I don't think we practice much. Yeah. When, when you don't – when you're – Veterans don't play in the preseason. It's funny, this game, I was talking with Coach Tomlin. My second year, 1978, I was a second-year player for the Steelers. We played the Cowboys in the last preseason game. Roger Staubach threw 50 passes in that game. They beat us on the last drive. We had Jack Lambert and Joe Green and all our guys in there trying to stop it. They scored with 29 seconds left. We put Len Swan and Terry Bradshaw back in trying to win the game. And both of those teams ended up playing in the Super Bowl that year. Hmm. Now, if, if you, you know, if you try to get your guys ready like that, they, they would kind of run you out of the league. But <laughs> I don't think we practice enough. I don't think the, the sharpness is there early on. Now, you're going to see some good offense. And you're going to see some highly skilled things going on in November. But I just think we need to practice more. 
Absolute treat to have you on every single time. Thank you so much for the amazing interview. Football Night in America, the Hall of Famer, Tony Tony Dungy on the home of the Cowboys. Thank you, Coach. We'll be watching Sunday night. All right. It should be a fun one. I'm expecting a shootout. In the rain, maybe, possibly. With these. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. I'm not happy about that because we'll be on the sidelines. So <laughs> hopefully it doesn't rain. But, uh, it's going uh, to be a good Anytime Steelers-Cowboys play, it's always fun.